The leitmotifs have a unique role in Siegfried, as they are said to have been used in no fewer than 650 places in this work. First, we meet the Nibelung Mime. He is Alberich's brother. Like Alberich, Wagner also describes Mime with an unsingable, dark and chromatic motif. In the following scene, Siegfried enters Mime's cave with a cheerful hoi ho. This natural tone leap, a fourth, stands for Siegfried's closeness to nature and contrasts with Mime's chromatic tone world. Siegfried is free, because, unlike his father Siegmund, he is no longer a plaything of the gods. Wagner sets this important aspect musically with a light motive that springs from nature. Wagner took its notes from the natural sounds of the horn. Wotan enters Mime's cave with solemn chords. As befits a god, Wagner composes solemn measured chords that stand out from the world of Mime in their major key form. Because Wotan appears in the mysterious form of a wanderer, the motive was given the name Wanderer Motive. The following forging scene with Mime and Siegfried is one of the greatest sections of the ring. With a firework display of light motives and colorful orchestral sound, Wagner stunningly depicts the scene in which the sword Notung is forged. When Siegfried angrily takes the hammer from Mime and takes over the work himself, Wagner vividly describes Siegfried's hand movements. Incidentally, there is a nice anecdote about this motif. When Wagner was working on the first act of Siegfried during his time in Zurich, a tinsmith living opposite made concentrated work impossible and Wagner immortalized the sounds of this beautiful motif. <laughs> In this piece we hear the motive of the sword Notung, which Siegmund already used in the Valkyrie. Siegfried uses this motive to incite the fire of the bellows. The motive sounds heavy in the winds again and again. <laughs> It is no coincidence that the giant Fafner has turned into a dragon. Wagner wants to show that anyone in possession of the ring turns into a monster, because wealth corrupts. When we hear the motive at the beginning of the prelude, we recognize that it is related to the leitmotif of the giants heard in the Rheingold. Compared to the mighty motive of the giants, however, the dragon's motive is merely a ponderous creeping motif that ends with a somber triton.
Siegfried was an uncouth youngling up to this point. This is followed by a section that shows us a new Siegfried. It shows him from his vulnerable side at the thought of his parents. There is no doubt that Wagner created a kindred spirit in Siegfried. Wagner was also never allowed to meet his biological father, who died of typhoid fever just six months after Wagner's birth. It is no coincidence that so many characters in Wagner's operas never knew their father. In addition to Sigmund from Die Walküre, we can also include Parsifal and Tristan. As Siegfried's thoughts wander to his mother, the Welsung motif from the Valkyrie appears. Siegfried blows the heroic Siegfried motif into his horn in front of Fafner's cave. Siegfried now sets off for the Rock of the Valkyries. First, he has to pass through the fire. In the prelude we hear the fire magic motif that we already know from Rheingold. Siegfried reaches the rock safely. This image, in which he sees Brunhilde sleeping in front of the Rock of the Valkyries, is an image of great poetry. The resting place motif is heard jubilantly in the orchestra at the beginning. The next scene is one of the most magnificent in the entire ring. Brunhilde's awakening motif is heard. This beautiful motif of Brunhilde awakening shows how Wagner knew how to create great things from two simple chords. He lets the E minor chord swell and fade in the winds and only picks up the note again in the winds in a crescendo and lets the harps play around it. The harp arpeggios are unmistakably reminiscent of the awakening of nature at the beginning of the ring in the prelude to Rheingold. Accompanied by the love ecstasy motif, Brunhilde greets Siegfried. (laughs) 
Brunhilde asks Siegfried to preserve her divine virginity. Wagner has composed a wonderful motive for this. He also used this eternal love motive in the Siegfried Irene. 